Hi, I'm Jen Neiman, co-founder of Property Elite, Chartered Surveyor and APC Assessor. At Property Elite, we provide training and support for the APC, Asset RICS and FRICS qualifications. We cover all routes, pathways and geographic regions via our team of specialist consultants and trained assessors. This also includes the senior professional, specialist, academic and direct entry routes. In this week's podcast, I take a look at the new RICS guidance note, Asbestos, Legal Requirements and Best Practice for Property Professionals and Clients for Fedition. It's essential listening for all APC and ASOC RICS candidates, particularly in relation to the mandatory health and safety competency. It is also relevant to the inspection and legal and regulatory compliance competencies. The full guidance note can be downloaded on the RICS website. You can find a link to this from our website blog. You can also read more about the basics relating to asbestos in a previous blog article accessed via our website. And remember, whilst the guidance note is specific to UK legislation, it's of wider international application and represents best practice. In this podcast, the term ACM is used to denote asbestos-containing material. In other contexts, it is sometimes used to denote aluminium cladding material, and the differences should be noted in their use by candidates. So if in doubt, make sure you state the full name rather than the acronym. So the new guidance note takes effect from the 6th of August 2021, and it replaces the former third edition guidance note, which was published before the control of asbestos regulations 2012 came into force. The guidance note aims to ensure that surveyors and their clients comply with UK legislation relating to asbestos. It also aims to ensure that nobody is put at risk of exposure to asbestos. The guidance note should be read alongside a number of pieces of UK legislation. This includes the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974, which provides a duty of care requirement on surveyors to manage and control asbestos-related risk. The Control of Asbestos Regulations 2012, which specifies specific duties in relation to the management of asbestos, the Construction Design and Management Regulations, CDM, 2015, relating to health and safety and construction. And there's also two pieces of guidance. So the approved Code of Practice, L1432 edition, Managing and Working with Asbestos, published by the Health and Safety Executive, and HSG265 Asbestos, the Surveyor Guide, published by HSE, relating to undertaking asbestos surveys. There's also some other pieces of government guidance, such as the CLARE guidance on asbestos in soil called CAR Soil. So if you have a look at our website blog, there's a really helpful graphic which demonstrates where asbestos might be found within the property life cycle. And this includes stages such as demolition, site and ground investigation, acquisition, lease, occupation, management, refurbishment, lease end and disposal and sale. So what are some of the best practice recommendations in the guidance note? So all surveyors should have asbestos awareness training in line with Regulation 10 of the Control of Asbestos Regulations 2012. This includes awareness of asbestos when inspecting premises. A duty to manage asbestos arises under Regulation 4 of the 2012 regulations. This applies to all non-domestic premises, including public buildings and the common parts of multi-occupied domestic premises. Where the duty to manage under Regulation 4 does not apply, a duty arises under Sections 2 and 3 of the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974 to minimise the risk of asbestos to the health and safety of others in relation to domestic premises. This duty for domestic premises is also emphasised by the Defective Premises Act 1972 and the Homes Fitness for Human Habitation Act 2018. The duty to manage can be fulfilled by ensuring that an asbestos register is available, assessing the risk of any asbestos present, and making this information available to anybody liable to disturb the asbestos present. Appendix B of the guidance notes sets out how to identify the duty holder, B1, and how the duty to manage applies to a variety of asset types in B2. So what steps must duty holders take? under Regulation 4. So 
they must take reasonable steps to find my materials likely to contain asbestos. You should presume materials contain asbestos unless there's strong evidence to suppose that they do not. To assess the risk of anybody being exposed to asbestos from these materials, to make a written record of the location and condition of ACMs and presumed ACMs and keep it up to date, so this would be in the management survey, to repair or remove any material that contains or is presumed to contain asbestos, if necessary, because of its location, condition, or the likelihood of it being disturbed. And finally, to prepare and put into effect an asbestos management plan to manage exposure risk. Full compliance will be achieved where an asbestos register and management plan are held and implemented. So how might this affect us as surveyors? So where an organisation owns premises, they will be the duty holder and have an obligation to manage asbestos and ensure the safety of their staff. Where a managing agent is instructed, the landlord, the duty holder, cannot delegate the statutory duty to manage asbestos. However, the landlord can claim contractually or in tort for a non-contractual duty against the managing agent if any action or inaction contributes to the landlord's failure to comply as a duty holder. The managing agent will also have a duty to manage asbestos risk under the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. If the landlord is absent, the duty holder may acquire additional duty holder responsibilities, as they may then be considered to be in charge of the property. If a surveyor is instructed to carry out refurbishment or building works, they may have a contractual duty and direct responsibility under Regulation 5 to collate information in a refurbishment and demolition survey on asbestos risk before works commence. This could include ensuring the client issues this information as part of the pre-construction information under CDM 2015. There are many other instances where surveyors may acquire or hold a duty of care in relation to asbestos risk management, and surveyors should therefore ensure that they read the RICS guidance note in full. That's it for today's podcast. Remember, you can book in your free 15-minute consultation via our website. We can also provide feedback on your referral or prelim review report. If you head to our website, you can also access our other free support resources, including our ebook guides, podcasts, videos, quizzes, blog, and CPD newsletter. We can't wait to work with you, so thank you for listening, and I'll see you next week.